looked like they were looking. Looks like it's a left rear guy, possibly. They were looking to maybe even see if he had like loose lugs or something when he first mm -hmm. came in. Something in the left rear, maybe a left rear tire going down. That can that can be real confusing to the driver. Denny Hamlin is losing touch with the leader Jeff Gordon just a bit. Three seconds is now the margin. Hamlin may be falling into the clutches of third place Jamie McMurray. Remember when I said that you wanted to run the first nine, uh, 90 percent of this race at 90 percent? Jeff Gordon's running at 90 percent right now. I hate to see it when he gets in that last 10 percent <laughs> and goes to 100. Now he's checking out on these boys. Jeff Gordon has not won a race this year. He has come so close to winning twice. He's been out front on the last restart of the race, but has failed to stand in victory lane so far. Not that we call that a failure. It's just they've come so close. They have, and I'm looking at the lap times, Larry. He's got a couple of tenths in the bank right now on everybody in the field. Yeah, he's running 29, 20s, and 30s. And Steve Burns, Jamie McMurray in third is running 29, 50s, and 60s. Larry Mack, we just heard his spotter, Keith Barnwell, tell Jamie, you know, Jamie led a lot of laps, as Mike pointed out. Jamie, take it easy, just race this racetrack. Good advice early. Thanks, Steve. Clint Boyer believes that they have a brake line that has split. He's taken that car to the garage. Now, that just reminds me of Martinsville and his teammate, uh, the 29 car of Kevin Harvick, who was our points leader going into that race. He had a left rear uh, brake caliper problem. Sam Hornish. Ooh. <laughs> A little bit of damage on his 77. Add him to the Darlington stripe list. And Sam was inside the top 15. He was running about 14th or 15th, but back to Clint Boyer, remember, he comes in here 12th at the points. See what happened to uh, Hornish, the IndyCar star, who came over to NASCAR a couple of years ago. Just got up just, just ever so slightly, a little too high. You just can't get out of it. The wall it's just like, grabs you. It's like a <laughs> magnet. It grabs all your car and won't let go of it. The lady in black says, I gotcha. Ten cars with 11 Darlington stripes so far. That wall isn't as pretty as it was 106 laps ago. Sprint brings you an inside look at what's happening now. 120, 112 laps in inside the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Jeff Gordon, who is leading this race, has the fastest lap of the race. And Kyle Busch, who started 43rd, is the biggest mover. He has improved 34 positions up to ninth. For more NASCAR stats, in-car audio, and live race radio, check out NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile at sprint.com slash speed. Here are the drivers who have gained the most positions since the start of this race. And I'm going to tell you, our leader's right now running 29 80s and 90s, and Kyle Busch is running 29 60s back there in the ninth spot right now. Yeah, we dropped off uh, right at a second. And it's, uh, Larry, I was watching the lap times, and it's almost like they flipped the switch. They're running high 28s. All of a sudden, they started running high to middle 29s just in a couple of laps. Elliot Sadler, 21st in his Ford lead lap car. Up front, Jeff Gordon. Three seconds on Denny Hamlin right now as he tries to put a lap on Travis Quapple in the 34. There's a look at the distance. Steve, what was Jamie Mack saying as we went to that commercial? Yeah, as soon as we hit commercial, Mike, Jamie said to his crew chief, Kevin Mannion, you know, I'm getting a little too loose. And Kevin said, I know, I'm watching you on TV. <laughs> Glad to provide a useful service. As uh, he puts a lap on Kevin Conway, who goes one lap down. Whatever he does, a pretty nice run at this point anyway. Led some laps already in the one car there, McMurray, and running third right now. And competitive lap times right there with most everybody looking good. You know, last season was tough for Jamie Mack. He knew it would be his final season with Jack Roush, who had to contract for NASCAR rules from five teams to four. And when Chip Ganassi said, I want him back, I want him back in one of our cars, McMurray responded with a Daytona 500 win and then never let up. He's been strong from the drop of the green flag to start the season. 
season. Yeah, he has, and uh, he's just comfortable now. He says he's very happy over there being back at it, kind of like being back at home, and uh, it's really showing. He's doing a great job. The last time a Roush Fenway car went to victory lane, Jamie McMurray was driving it at Talladega back in the fall. Of course, drove for Chip Ganassi, starting his cup career, won the rookie of the year driving over there. But, you know, quickly, one thing I think is helping him, and I noted this early on in the year, he get to run some of the nationwide races. He raced here last night, finished third. I believe that seat time is just helping his confidence. That's really important to him, and it, it's really paying off. Kyle Busch in the 18 keeps picking him up and putting him down. He just passes Jeff Burton. That's for eighth place. Remember, Kyle started 43rd. Now, just in front of Kyle Busch is Tony Stewart in that 14 car. And I got to stress because he, they did not get fuel in that car the last stop. Matt, they have to be within about eight to ten laps of being forced to come to pit road. Larry Mack, the clock is ticking. At this juncture, Darian Grubb is going to call Stewart to pit road at lap 125. The crew is readying here in the pit. Tony says the car, although lap time show, he is mirroring leader Jeff Gordon's lap times or better, but they're running out of laps before they're going to have to fuel this race car. It's tight on both ends of the racetrack. Thanks, Matt. So he'll be in in six laps. Meanwhile, Clint Boyer has completed repairs on the 33. And there's Boyer, who is back in the race. They lost 19 laps making repair to the 33. Now, what the 14 will have to go through, it's going to be about lap 145 to 150, about another 20 or so laps before all those leaders will have to come to pit road should we stay green. And there's kind of a danger zone on pit stops. When you get near time for green flag stops, people are out there on old tires. Then some guys come in and get new tires, and they start. Oh, he's coming to pit road right now. Yeah, he's coming in about three laps earlier than we expected. Tony Stewart coming off track and on to pit road and giving up 17th place. And this is the other part of the danger I was talking about. He's going to have new tires now. He's going to be about a second to a second and a half quicker than, uh, than the other cars, and that closer rate can get you in trouble. Oh, he'll be Superman on new tires. Matt? Absolutely expecting a chassis adjustment for the 14 car. Stewart said he was worse at in turns three and four, then one and two. And you can still see some damage from the rear of the bumper bar hanging down. A tear off, off as well. And the reason why Mike, they came in about three laps early, he was starting to hit some lap cars and didn't want to take a chance on losing any more time. So Stewart is back out. He's going to lose at least a lap, maybe two. We'll mark it when he gets back up to speed. Now, this can be one of the toughest pit roads to get on. We just watched David Gilliland completely miss pit road, but David Gilliland, Travis Quapple, they're having to come to pit road right now because they stayed out a while ago to take the wave around. And, and that's, the, that's the downside to the wave around. You can't pit if you take the wave around. Then you got to hope that you get a quick caution to get caught back up. All right, Tony Stewart gets back up to speed about one corner ahead of Jeff Gordon. So Stewart is now one lap down. Let's check with Steve. Mike, Jeff Gordon said the balance on this car is the best it's been all run all night. He said it's a little edgy in one, in one and two, but crew chief Steve Letard knew that this afternoon. He said Jeff will complain a little bit about one and two, but three and four is where you pass race cars, and that's where I want Jeff Gordon to be fastest. He's not only the leader, Steve, he is the quickest car on the track right now. Jeff Gordon has built up a lead over Denny Hamlin and 